Sisters, a podcast talking about the books by Tamara Pierce. I'm Marisa. And I am Ariana. And occasionally on my end, you'll hear the dulcet tones of the leaf blowers outside my window. But they may sound like wind, and that's what I'm really hoping to get us in the mood for this book. Right, sister? <laughs> exactly, sister. <laughs> So, uh, as a reminder, this podcast is really T for Teen. We use strong language, and, and the books explore mature themes. Yeah, but especially fair, starting books, this book. Yes, yes, this book definitely explores some mature some themes. Definitely mature aspects. Yes. Um, but yeah, uh, what book are we talking about today, sister? Well, today we are talking about the second book in um, the Song of the Lioness series, in the Hand of the Goddess. Yeah, In the Hand of the Goddess, mm. which came out in, when oh was God, it? like, what, 80? I've been trying to say, 84, I think? I want to say 84, because I feel like the... 83. Okay. See, I thought... No, it says 84. I, no, 84, yeah. 84, I was... It, yeah, but it, because right. the first one came out in 83. Yeah. So, it came out in 1984. It is the second novel by Tamara Pierce. Mm. I don't know why I'm like giving us trivia yeah. about it. Just some, We're going to talk about it. Just some little bits of trivia. It was uh, originally some... published by... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it has the original um, summary in here too. It, on and, mine, um, it's like... Pursuing her desire then... to be a knight, Alana learns many things in her role as squire to Prince Jonathan, but fears Duke Roger, an ambitious sorcerer whom she knows <laughs> who one day That is deal. a sentence. <laughs> I'll run on one at that. <laughs> this cost me $5.50 in 2003. Oh, excellent. I know, right? Fantastic. If only we could just buy books like mm-hmm. like this with a fantastic, fully illustrated cover right. and everything. I love that cover. I just feel like... Yeah. Okay. Side note. I really should look up, see if there's any, like... Uh, tarot decks that are based on Tortal, like Tortal and Tarot. <laughs> Tortero. Because the art, the art on, on the copies of the books that Risa has um, honestly give me that sort of writer strong feel. And so it feels like <laughs> yeah, that lends to it. Just, you know, yeah. The goddess. I mean, writer weight. Writer weight. Oh, what did I, I said writer strong. That's an actor. The actor. <laughs> Guys, we are off to a great start. We're not even talking we are, about the book anymore. We're not even talking about the book yet. Um, we, got, we started. We, we, we I read a summary. Meandered. <laughs> you sure did. It was, it was one sentence. I think my synopsis that I wrote is maybe a little longer than that. A little bit. A little bit. Five pages. <laughs> Five pages. <laughs> maybe I can just like paraphrase what I wrote. We'll see. We'll give it a shot. It's all of the stuff. It it is all of the important stuff that we need mm-hmm. to and, remember. And you know what? We'll 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 talk about it as we go too. Exactly. So, yeah, that's what we did last time. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> the okay. So the entire story starts out. We are with Alana of Trabond, who is squire to Prince Jonathan. Uh, and if you somehow missed it from the first book, is pretending to be a boy. Alan of Trebon. Oh my gosh. I know, crazy. So in, in case you somehow missed that, that's what's going on. <laughs> that's going to be a so, big part of this book. <laughs> <laughs> just a just a little bit? A little bit. <laughs> so Alana is on her way back from an errand for her friend Sir Miles when she is made to stop for the night in a forest due to rain. See? I also have run on sentences. Much <laughs> like <laughs> Nope, that's a much better sentence. It is. After she gets her camp set up, she is greeted by a small black kitten that is soaking wet. The kitten has purple eyes that match Alana's phone. After she gets the kitchen... The kitchen situated? The kitchen situated, yep. (laughs) The kitten situated. She's greeted by another visitor to her campfire, this time the mother goddess herself. Oh my gosh. The goddess tells Alana that she has three fears that she must accept. Her fear of the ordeal of knighthood, her fear of love... And her fear of Duke Roger of of Conte is that how we're saying Conte, it? Conte, yes. Conte. Conte. That's where the little Conte. I know. I do not expect. I know. Like white people to understand I what know. accented letters mean. So. Italia. <laughs> so. 
um, the goddess tells her to be to be careful and gives her a gift, a still burning ember from her campfire, cold enough to wear with the appearance that it is still burning. Um, and also the cat. Also, <laughs> basically. basically, yeah. It, it's just a magic spot. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> apparently. It's like, this is just a magic place. Welcome like, to the oh. magic spot. <laughs> <laughs> when she returns to the palace, she names her new kitten Faithful, though, funnily enough, one of them suggests Pounce. <laughs> noticed that i was like oh. i was like well then i didn't realize that was a call back to this book okay but um uh and true to his name he follows her around everywhere even the classes except to that of duke roger when meeting roger for the first time faithful is not a fan hisses and spits but they all kind of agree like roger po- throws out that i was just visiting the dogs in the kennel and alana's like yeah that was totally that's totally what's going yeah, on oh my gosh it's not that she can smell evil or he can smell <laughs> evil <laughs> it's that dogs he dogs. hates him <laughs> <laughs> and the following time she starts being able to understand faithful's meows as if they are human speech but not everyone can understand faithful faithful only lets people understand him who he wants to understand him. Yeah. She's good for him. You, you'll, you'll see as, as the book goes on that Faithful just summons people to be with Alana sometimes. <laughs> Love it. No, no, no. You've been doing this for too long. Jonathan! <laughs> so that summer, a delegation from the neighboring country, Tussain, comes to court. The rumors circulating the palace say that they're there to size up the Tortalan mm. army. One night during the feasts for the delegation, a knight from Toussaint implies that Tortalans are terrible sword, terrible with swords. Gosh, I was just, <laughs> yeah. Uh, something that causes all of the knights in the room to get tense and just, they are They just, just start whipping their dicks out. <laughs> they pretty much do. Jonathan proposes that uh, to, uh, hmm. Jonathan proposes that this knight, his name is Dane, I thought I'd just put that yeah, in there. Yeah, they, they, they Find make one of their specific own. to, like, point him out. They do. Um, they, Tamara Pierce does. <laughs> no, the characters are the world. They have minds of I'm talking own. about, like, is a show. I see yeah. it as a show in my head, so. <laughs> so he, uh, Jonathan nominates Alana for the task. She is just a squire, but she is known at court to be one of the best fencers there. Um, she agrees, uh, but <laughs> Dane draws the first blood, meaning that he has won the fight, but he keeps going to try and kill her, and so she just gets really pissed off and disarms him, and it's like, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> Motherfucker. Um, and she says that just because he behaved poorly didn't mean she would, when Miles asks her why she didn't kill yeah. him. Roger is upset by learning that Alana, to him, Alan, is better sword is a better swordsman than he originally thought. After saving John from the sweating sickness and helping him defeat the Asandir, Alana is more of a threat than he originally expected. He decides that he must kill Alana or he won't be able to kill John. And this is just a scene where he just yeah. says these things. Yeah, he just he just exposits <laughs> all over the place. I love that about this book. Yeah. But- <laughs> I'll keep going. Uh, Before John's 19th birthday, Alana goes into the city to retrieve gifts that Thom said. Yes, I'm still going to say Thom. Thank you, everyone who commented. It's pronounced Tom. I don't give a fuck. (laughs) His name is Thom. (laughs) Um, As well as George's gift to him. George offers to send his people to go spy in Tusain to see if they can get better information than the Tortolan spy network has been getting. George implies to Alana that he'd like to marry her, but she laughs him off and he escorts her back towards the palace, helping her bring the gifts. When her hands are full with gifts, he kisses her, to which she replies, I should have stabbed you, which I think that was an incredibly fair response Mm -hmm. to him saying, I'm going to take advantage of you, and then kisses her. Like, I should have stabbed you, is a valid response. Yeah. Um, Enter Delia of Eldorn. I say Delia. Do you think it's, it's Delia? I kept pronouncing it Delia in my head. Okay. Okay. Um, court beauty. All the men at court fall madly in love with her, though Alana doesn't like her. <laughs> um, that winter, Alana has to camp out one night in the royal forest. Because of a sudden blizzard, she makes her camp in a snowbank, sticking her sword up through the roof to keep an airway open. During the early hours of the morning, she is woken up by the sound of a wild boar. It tries to get in, so she kills it. Um, and then she sees the boar has demonic eyes, and once it dies, it vanishes. Um, 
So she knows that someone tr- uh, with sorcery tried to kill her. Mm-hmm. Um, the That's very convenient way to... <laughs> She's like, just... I think that was magic. Oh. <laughs> I think someone tried to kill me. <laughs> uh, Delia continues to annoy Alana by toying with all her friends. Raul and Gary fight a duel over her. John writes terrible poetry to her and makes Alana listen to it. Delia clearly knows Alana dislikes her and makes her do all sorts of errands for her, like fanning her and getting her drinks. Uh, The only of her friends not in love with Delia is Alex, who used to be Roger's squire before he was knighted. Alex and Alana are talking about fencing when they end up going to uh, do a practice duel, being like, hey, we're both really good. Which one of us is better? Alex gets really into it, despite Alana telling him she doesn't want to do it anymore. uh, And he gouges her leg and then breaks her collarbone. Uh, He goes in to kill her, but thankfully, Faithful went to get Sir Miles, who puts a stop to it, by going, very interesting, Alex. (laughs) Just, damn. It's like, I'm... Disappointed dad You can obviously see. I know, right? Also, just another one of those times of Faithful just being like, okay... I'm going to go get help. (laughs) Excuse me. I'm going to go find someone who's going to interrupt this. Yeah. Um, In spring, George brings news to Alana of Toussaint preparing for war in the Drell Valley, which is owned by both countries on their own side of the river. She brings the information to Sir Miles, who takes her seriously and brings it to the king. And in the next few days, war is declared and the king sends out a call to muster with Duke Duke Gareth of Naxon, Gary's father, set to command. When the troops are gathered and Duke Gareth is addressing them, his horse suddenly rears and his saddle slides off, breaking his leg. Alana investigates to find that someone planted a burr in his horse's blanket, and the person who had saddled his horse so loosely had disappeared without a trace. She then learns that Duke Roger is to replace Duke Gareth as commander. George comes to visit her in the palace that night to send her off, and he sa- he warns her about Roger, which she blows off. He tells her that he'd like to marry her, and he says he won't bring it up again unless she does, and he wants to stay her friend. And then he kisses her, and be- and they're both flustered. <laughs> it, it was a whole thing. It was. Um, <laughs> before leaving, Roger decides who will be in what unit, placing Gary and Raoul under... Jonathan in the valley by the crossable part of the river with Sir Miles to advise someone who's not like he's a history dude. He, <laughs> he does not. He's not a warrior. Yeah. Um, while Roger, Alex and Alex's squire are to stay at the reinforced fort. Um, <laughs> the king makes it very clear that they are to defend the left bank of the river only and not cross over to pursue on the right side on threat of treason. <laughs> if you if you Look. cross that river I will behead you. (laughs) (laughs) At the camp by the river drill, Alana makes friends with all the foot soldiers there, except for the slimy gem Tanner. She specifically becomes friends with a large man named Big Thor. I do. (laughs) I have to. I have to. Oh, Big Thor. Um, I do have to specifically note every single time she talks about gem Tanner, it is gem Tanner. Gem Tanner. Like some people will be like, gem. It's like, Gem Tanner. Gem Tanner. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Um, She isn't able to see any fighting action, so she goes to help in the healer's tent instead, where she works herself almost to death. John takes her back to the main camp on his horse, and when Faithful accuses Alana of falling in love with John, she goes back to her own tent, where she promptly throws up and thinks about the injuries of the men she healed, uh, or couldn't heal. Jonathan hears and comforts her to say that he also threw up after his first battle. And then they're like, don't tell anyone. And I was like, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two nights later, Alana goes to, I don't know why I specified two nights later, but I did. Um, because they specify. Or, they sorry. Did. Why are we <laughs> saying this like it's a like full, full on production company? <laughs> a woman wrote a book. Okay. <laughs> Alana goes to find Big Thor while he's on duty with Jem Tanner, but neither man is at their post. Alana sees enemy men crossing the river to Tortal's side, and she runs to alert the others, telling the guards she passes to sound their horns. As they all get ready for the attack, John asks Alana if there's a way he can convince her to stay away from the fighting, which she quickly shoots down. (laughs) Alana kills several enemy men, though she gets her shield arm hurt from the first one. She saves Jonathan's life before reinforcements arrive. After the fighting, Alana sets off to find Big Thor, even though she's losing quite a bit of blood from the fight. She uses her gift to light the way, where 
where she finds him, he is blinded and not in good shape. But he tells her that Jem was the traitor. He is definitely dying and Alana can't help him, so he just asks her to make him go to sleep. So she does, so that he can just go to sleep. And die. And just die, you know? So he doesn't have to be sitting there. Amazing. Um, After he dies, she passes out from blood loss and from using up too much of her gift. And apparently she was glowing (laughs) when they found her. Love that. Um, Alana wakes up three days later, completely drained. She learns that Jem Tanner has disappeared. Alana is banned from any real work due to her injuries, so she makes herself useful doing non-magical tasks in the healing tents, as well as learning to help the smiths. One night, she goes on sentry duty, where she is found by Roger. Roger tells her that if she were his friend, this is a whole scene. It is. And I absolutely love. <laughs> yeah. So, amazing. Um, But... Where he's like, okay, if you, you know, we're not friends, are we, Alan? (laughs) And she's like, we're not on the friendliest terms, no. (laughs) Um, And he goes, like, he says, if, you know, if they were friends, she'd have a long, like, healthy life. And she says, well, I would only want to do that if I knew my friends also would live to a ripe old age. And so he leaves on less than friendly terms. So he's just like, so we'll just go on being whatever this is. <laughs> uh, and then after, right after he leaves, a fog rolls in. Um, and he does Jason not wake up. I'm sorry. I have to say that bitch does not waste any time. Every single thing hap- happens right after he leaves a room. And it's like, why? Yeah. Why is only Alana? <laughs> well, we know why, so we'll talk about that. <laughs> True. Um, so Faithful won't wake up. Alana gets very tired. She tries to wake herself up until she's hit upside the head with a rock and taken by Jem Tanner and the enemies. So the enemies. You know. The guards find Faithful asleep and Alana gone, and they sound the alert at camp. They aren't permitted to cross the river. Also, two other guys get captured. Like it's not just Alana. <laughs> yeah. Um. They sound iller, blah, 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 blah. Uh, They aren't permitted to cross the river to find her, but she is a noble, so the conventions of war state that she has the right to be ransomed. But a ransom note never comes. John almost spills the beans to Miles about Alana's identity, but Miles stops him and says he wants to hear it from Alana herself. And that is a fantastic scene, and I want to talk about it later. Yes. Um... Miles then tells John that he would have to stop a rescue party if it was formed, but he was going to go to the fort to talk to Roger, so be good. Um, wink. Wink. John then forms a rescue party with Gary, Raul, their squires, and 30 men from the camp. Just 30 who men. came of their own free will. He's like, it my was like, not, not, or my whatever, my cousin's not gonna uh, miss uh, 30 men. It's It's basically just like, you know... G- they told one guy, this is what we're going to do. Anyone who wants to come can. And then the entire fucking camp shows up. Because literally everybody shows up for Alan. <laughs> exactly. They're like, we love that little guy. Yeah. Can't mess with the little guy. <laughs> Don't mess with the little guy. <laughs> um, Alana comes to in a hut behind enemy lines with two other men that were kidnapped. She finds that she is in chains that are specially made to bind the gift. She picks the locks of her two compatriots. I love that I used that word, um, but can't pick her own due to the spells on them. Okay. The two Actually, same. Just, okay. just mm-hmm. while you're talking about just. Oh, yeah. The use of the word compatriot, I feel like is, is most apt here because they have, they are patriots of the same, you know, country yeah. and they've, they've been brought here. And so these are her compatriots. Sorry. Exactly. Continue. <laughs> Uh, and in chat, it's brought up, they can't behead us all. That is literally just what they say. Yeah. They can't behead us all. It's like, that, that's our, that's our mean, rally cry. <laughs> they can, but they won't. But they could. <laughs> well, we're just going to have to execute most of our fucking army. <laughs> yeah. So the Tussain king's brothers enter, uh, and one of them is Jem. Uh, while the two brothers deal with Alana, the other Total men are able to escape. Um, as the Duke, so the brother who isn't Jem is Duke Helam. Hilam? Hylam? 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 I think. Hylam. We'll call him Hylam. <laughs> um, is threatening Alana with torture. Um, and she's just like, okay. 
<laughs> like, Bring it, bitch. <laughs> like, she just goes on the entire time as just not even paying attention to what he's saying. And she's just like, wow, your mom fucked a warthog, <laughs> warthog didn't she? <laughs> That's pretty much just what she says. Yeah. Um, but then the rescue party finds her and they take Hylam and Jem hostage so they can get safe passage back to their camp and to negotiate peace in the valley. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. The end. The end. <laughs> no, chapter over. That, I love how, like, episodic some of these yeah, chapters are. Yeah. Where it's like something big happens and then, ah, yes, at the end of the chapter, it's all wrapped up. <laughs> yeah. The winter after the Hussein War, Alana goes to Mistress Cooper to learn how to be a girl. Alana comes back several days later and Mistress Cooper dresses her up and they start to teach her how to sit when John and George show up in the hilarious scene to me of George is bringing John home to meet his mother. (laughs) Honestly. I just like, literally. oh, are you? And then the best part is when John goes, oh, are you changing your mind? Do you not want me to meet her? So- or do you not want her to meet me? I'm like... <laughs> it's fine. They just need to be a thruple. It's it's cool. That's 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 exactly. all that needed to happen. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, and they don't know that Alana is there. They're both surprised by Alana's clothing, but not too taken aback. Alana continues to go with Mistress Cooper into the city with a black wig on to conceal her identity because red hair, purple eyes pretty much can only be her. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone would just be like, wow, Alan is just dressing in drag. And it's like, oh, um, okay, all right. I, you know. I feel like everybody would be okay with it. They would. I, They're like, yeah, the little guy. Just <laughs> look at him go. Look just at him wear that dress. He was filling it out nicely. <laughs> yeah, he's doing great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, um... The, that winter, the wolves are bad. It's a wolf winter, hence the name of the chapter. Um, especially one that has been nicknamed Demon Grey, uh, who stole a baby. Just an entire an baby. An entire baby. <laughs> Just, that wolf came into a hut and stole a baby and left. And Demon Grey ate my baby. Okay, I have to, I have to question <laughs> the validity of this statement now. Well, actually, you know, they did prove that it was Dingo's yeah. that ate that woman's baby, and... That they is it, so awful, not- so awful, though, to have your baby eaten by dingoes and then for decades people make it into a joke. Yeah. <laughs> like, holy shit. Okay, but, um, uh, right, Demon Grey, <laughs> he stole a baby. <laughs> stole the baby. king, <laughs> the king ordered every man in the palace who could hold a spear to go on, uh, to go on a hunt for the wolf. Alana sticks to the back of the hunting party because she doesn't really care. She's just there to be there. Um, she's not trying to prove a point to anyone <laughs> like all of the other knights are, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> um, she doesn't actually want the glory of killing the wolf. She hears a crash and finds Duke Roger over the body of a large wolf, which he says she could have taken if she had just been a little bit earlier. Then she hears a large wolf behind her and that is actually Demon Grey. Whoa! <laughs> The wolf attacks her and she ends up wrestling with it before she yeah. stabs it with her knife. She just full on like hops on its back. There's a whole situation. Um, yeah. She just stabs it with her knife. Uh, after the fight, she holds her ember necklace to comfort herself and finds that if she holds it, she can see magic. She is surprised to see Roger's orange magic on the bodies of the two large wolves. Yeah. She later admits to Faithful that she think Roger was trying to kill her. I think... I think Roger was trying to kill me. <laughs> There's there is a completely logical like, reason for logical this. reason for it. Yes, but it's still it's like <laughs> while you're reading it, it's just like wow, you fucking tried to kill me. There were several times because I I had forgotten the actual reason. Oh yeah. Um, so there were several times that I literally just went, "You fucking moron! What are you?" <laughs> Want to be this dumb? God. <clears throat> On the night of her seventeenth birthday, Alana leaves the social event before the end of the night, thinking that she didn't want to see Jonathan live with Delia. She then goes and gets dressed in her women's clothes to walk around the Rose Garden Inn. Uh, yeah, that was a sentence. <laughs> um, John finds her out there, knows who she is, and upon seeing the pregnancy charm she wears, he asks her if she wants to try it out. Um, Alana is mortified, but he kisses her. This is. 
This is a scene I hate <laughs> so much. We're going to go on at length about this. <laughs> yes. Um, is mortified, but he kisses her when she seems to be enjoying it. Jonathan goes to unlace her fucking bodice just out there in the gardens. You know. Um, which startles her and she pulls away. He tells her that she needs to stop fighting what has to be and that they belong to one another. Fucking chill, Oof. dude. You're like... Mm. Um, <laughs> Alana runs off to her room hoping to be asleep before John goes to spend the night with Delia but John comes back to his attached room and she realizes she does want him she goes to his room and tells him that she's scared and he says they can be scared together the following summer Alana stays happy with her lessons from Mrs. I feel Cooper like it's very strongly implied and we need to say this that they fuck they fuck they immediately fuck yeah. and that is I feel so uncomfortable with mm-hmm. that uh <laughs> Delia is less happy. She finds her, she has lost control of Jonathan. She is revealed to be working for Roger, <gasps> who she is apologizing to profuse. She's just, that's like a cult going on there. Yeah. And we never fully go into that. Like, in the entire series, it's not fully explored. This fucking cult of Roger. <laughs> like, he for sure boned down on that chick. Like, <laughs> I, I feel like he boned down on all of the people in this cult. <laughs> He seems like the person to bone down on his cult followers. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, you laugh. Roger tells tight. her not to worry, not to worry that he has other plans to achieve his goals. And he like pets her hair while he's saying this. It's so fucking weird. <laughs> Lovely. That October, another sickness hit Tortal, hitting the queen particularly. She pulls through, but just barely, but her health does not fully recover. Alana asks Miles if he is suspicious of the queen's illness like she is, and he tells her, uh, and tells him about all the things she thinks might be connected to Roger, but Miles tells her to drop it unless she is proof. <laughs> unless she wants to die, basically. Yeah. Uh, that winter, Alex convinces Alana to go skating with him. As they're out on the pond, Alana falls through the ice. Uh, when she tries to resurface, the ice has healed back. Yeah. You know. It's just healed back up over where she fell through. Like everybody's She's nightmares. Power- <laughs> exactly. That's everybody's nightmares, I, right? This this book implanted that nightmare into yeah. me, I feel. No, wasn't there like an episode of Hercules? Probably. Where that happened? I feel like it was like Hercules or Xena that put that idea in my head. Yeah. Um, Side note, I, I had that fear <laughs> after almost when I when I drowned. And you know, like, yeah. I tried to come back up and there was a floaty over me, so I couldn't I couldn't break the surface tension. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I drowned. I'm like seven. Just a little bit. <laughs> Just like that, that time that the riptide took me out into the ocean. Yeah! <laughs> and you went, don't tell mama. <laughs> uses the power of the ember stone to both to burst through the ice after she's rescued faithful shows that the ice has been salted by just licking the ice like Faithful's if i lick just this like, long I'm enough going to lick this <laughs> someone will notice and jonathan <laughs> does uh <laughs> which caused the weakness of the ice which resulted in her fall after this alana decides to send word to thom through also everyone's just like um this was attempted murder yeah and everyone's just like who was being like <laughs> No, I believe it's Alex specifically who goes, so who wanted to murder one of us? <laughs> and it's like, I don't know, Alex. <laughs> who? Jesus. God, Alex. Who farted? <laughs> um, she sends word to Thom through one of George's messengers uh, about the whole issue. When the messenger never comes back, George tells her that they found him with poisoned arrows in his back. She decides she needs to go to the city of the gods to see Thom herself. George accompanies her, much to her dismay, um, to go see her brother, uh, who has now passed his written test for sorcer- sorcery mastery. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> The monks now hate him since they fear how powerful he is. At least that's what he says. Yeah. Um, as I well think as it he's might just acting he's like an asshole yeah. to them. But he's, he's a cute just... little prick and I love him. I still think he baby. <laughs> um, she discusses with him the predicament with Roger, her gift from the goddess, and how she wants him to move to court to protect Jonathan when she goes away after passing her ordeal of knighthood, which is coming up now. It's less than a year away. Um, 
Halloween's just hours away. Exactly. Thank you. Uh, he agrees to this and helps uh, her talk through the rest. When she and George leave to go back to Chorus, they are attacked on the road and by hired men. George gets hit with a non-poisoned arrow. That's and he and Alana lucky. kill all but one of the men. Alana tries to get info about uh, out of the remaining man, but when he tries to tell her who hired him, he fucking dies. <laughs> uh, Alana gets George to a wayhouse and heals him, telling him he's not allowed to die, and he survives, and he's like, I didn't know you cared. And she's like, of course I care. Um... <laughs> You know, just. Yeah. <laughs> Roger really is doing the most. <laughs> he really, really is. On Alana's 18th birthday, all her friends wake her up with the amazing present of beautiful male armor. Um, they all are just like, everyone in the castle pitched in. Like, literally everyone. Literally the cooks, everyone. The- <laughs> like, the hostlers, everyone. Um... And then she finds that Miles bought her horse armor for uh, Moonlight with a little perch on it for pound, uh, Pounce. Faithful. See, we're going to just keep doing that. No, not even a, a pa- It's a fucking cup. It's a fucking cup holder. No. For, it's a kitten holder. <laughs> it's a kitten holder. And he sits in it and he's so very, very happy. <laughs> um, just, just so that everyone is clear. Anyone who didn't read the book. Yeah. Faithful is very happy. With his kitten holder. <laughs> he, he is just ecstatic. At it's like, I don't have to run alongside the horses anymore. <laughs> I mean, I will. Because <laughs> she, how I mean, he also just was like around her, yeah. around her shoulder. Yeah. It's generally and on her saddle, apparently. Mm-hmm. Um, she feels terrible about all of this and how all these people care about her. And she's been lying to them. <laughs> and Jonathan is like, dude. Like... Do you really think that these people will care that much? And she's like, yes. Um, in fact, do you think some of them maybe could have already guessed that you're keeping something like this? Maybe. <laughs> uh, she then tells John that it, uh, they'll, that she's going to need two nights to instruct her on the Code of Chivalry before her ordeal. But she only has, John is the only person who she knows knows. Um <laughs> And he tells her to tell Gary, his cousin, um, <laughs> Gary, Gary, oh, sorry, Sir Gary, Sir Gary and John, Gary and John, their cousins, <laughs> run a kingdom. <laughs> John with his cousins Roger and Roger and Gary. Gary. <laughs> In a fantasy, I like this is high fantasy. I love that we just have Gary, Alana of Trebond, Gary. <laughs> Of Naxon. Of Naxon. 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 I'm from Naxon. <laughs> oh. Um, uh, so she takes Gary out into the forest to tell him. And he's like, so what do you have to tell me? Because this is weird. <laughs> and so she's like, I'm a woman. And he's like, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> like, can you imagine how people are going to fucking react to this? That's that's Gary's reaction. Basically, it's, it's like when our friend came out and like all of us knew. But at the same time, I wanted to be there for every single time he told someone just to see their reaction. That's what Gary's reaction is. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, he accepts the post of instructing her with John. Um, and then they just have a really nice time in the next few months. Being like, she's like, wow, two people know I'm a girl. And instead of the entire castle just thinking that John is fucking him. Like, like I mean, he is fucking his squire. But yeah. they're all like, wow, the prince is not going to not gonna produce an heir, is he? <laughs> It's like, geez. Because <laughs> um, the they're teenagers, you okay. know for a fact that they're not, like, playing it cool. Sorry. Yeah, I know, right? <sighs> um, the day of her ordeal, she is fussing with George, who tells her to rest. So then he just drugs her and she sleeps. Drugs and her. I have so many problems with this. I um, gasped audibly. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and I remembered that it happened, and I still... <sighs> Every time. Okay. Um, then she wakes up in time for her uh, for dinner before her ordeal, where she's just not going to eat, and Miles is like, fucking eat something. So she eats a little bit. 
Um, his daddy told her to. Gary and John <laughs> instruct her in the code, and then she holds vigil overnight in the temple before her ordeal. And then she can't speak until the ordeal is over. So that's just a huge thing. Um, in the chamber, she is presented with her worst fears, the cold, because she just fucking hates the cold, spiders, because I guess it's, it's very, like, snakes. Why'd it have to be snakes? Um, <laughs> isn't it, though? It really is. It really is. Um, and also, t- J.K. Rowling copied that idea. Yeah. Um drowning, uh, not being able to save people who are dying. The final thing she's presented with is a hazy boundary that she claws through as if it's cloth. And then on the other side, she sees Roger standing over Jonathan's dead body. The chamber doors open and she is done with her ordeal, though her hands are bloody from clawing through the cloth. That night, she is knighted and Thom presents her with a shield that has the Turband coat of arms on it. Later, when they are alone, Thom shows her that it's magicked. And the shield really has a lioness rampant on it. And then you look and it's like, there are only like 60 pages left. How? What's, what else is going to happen here? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, the next night it, uh, at the midwinter, midwinter feast, midwinter fest. Midwinter fest. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> the midwinter feast. Um, Alana sees that the queen is still very weak. She suddenly realizes that she needs to act right now or the queen will die. Like, right that uh, fucking moment. <laughs> she went, oh, fuck. <laughs> um, she slips away from the feast while Thom distracts Roger. Uh, and she breaks into Roger's rooms just by shoving her magic into the locks. She <laughs> just crammed her logic in there. She's like, she's like, I could try and find, like, a less destructive way to do this, but I don't have the time. The queen is dying. <laughs> so she just shoves it. Um, she breaks into his rooms. In his workroom, she finds a wax doll made to look like the queen is under running water in a sink. Which, they have sinks? Yeah, there were a lot of running water comments that I was very confused by. <laughs> I... I don't know how much running water there is in Tortal, but it seems like a lot. I can only assume there's somehow a spring attached to Roger's rooms. Let's just say it's built into... Is it built into a fucking... uh, They have full sewers, though. What? They have full sewers in Chorus. Well, yeah, but sewer is different than... I know, but it's like... Okay. Okay, sorry. We're (laughs) getting into the infrastructure. Sorry. (laughs) Just getting into the infrastructure. We should really have an, a specific episode that's just like the infrastructure of Tortal. Because we do get very <laughs> intimate with it in um, Becca Cooper. We do? Yeah. Um, okay. So in the sink, she knows from her classes with Roger that this spell would be why the queen's health is so poor. Uh, and why it seems more natural. Uh, she also finds wax dolls of her and many of the other people in the castle in a gauze bag. The gauze is ripped and it looks like the cloth that Alana tore through in her ordeal. And the actual, like, Alana wax doll falls out. That's how she figures out that there's a rip in it. Um, she brings the evidence with her down to the feast and presents it to the king and queen, who just bursts into tears because she is being presented with a wax doll of herself that is, like, completely worn away. <laughs> It's like, why did this child just dump this in my lap? <laughs> why is this child doing this to me? Um, Get this little purple-eyed <laughs> demon away from me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Roger denies that it's his and is like, this kid is making it up to discredit me. And everyone else is like... <laughs> <laughs> they just, they're like, uh... Um, he then challenges Alana to trial by combat, which the king allows. <laughs> I'm going to allow this. Like, <laughs> sustained. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like yes, if seems I'm fair. if if Alan is right, then the gods will strike me down. <laughs> it's like okay, the gods fucking strike you down. <laughs> Alana prepares for the duel in her room, and all of her friends and Miles are there to support her. Alana then tells Miles about her secret, and he tells her that he already knew, but he was glad that she still told him. (laughs) She then goes to fight with Roger. Roger uses an illusion to hide which arm his sword is in, and while that is against the rules, people don't try to stop the fight in case he kills Alana. But Thawne fucking calls it out. He's like, that fucker is trying to fuck my sister over. (laughs) 
Uh, Roger then slashes through the special corset Alana wears to bind her chest, and everyone sees that she's a, her boobs just plop her out, apparently. Like, um, so while she sorts herself out, Thom tells everyone the entire story, and he, like, brought their birth papers and shit like that. <laughs> he to be was like, yeah, ready to so- out her. He's like, he's like, I'm so glad that I get to explain this because I've, Alana would not. I have been carrying these around for like eight years now. The king is angry and demands to know who knew about it and why she did it. And her friends all come forward to say they knew. And Alana said that she wanted to be a knight, but they never would have given her shield to her as a woman. And the king, and she's like, would you have given me my shield if I was a woman? If you'd known, and he just doesn't say anything, it's and like, she's like, "Bitch, I told you." <laughs> that at that moment, uh, Roger attacks her. She taps into her anger and intense a- hate that she has for the man, and she wins the duel and kills him. Um, and th- that's like the end of the book. The epilogue <laughs> is literally just Alana setting off to go on her adventures with Coram, <laughs> and all of her friends are like, "Please stay," and she's like, "No, <laughs> no." I'm Alana. I'm just impish. <laughs> but she's like, but people are mad. And they're like, I mean, a couple people, but like, we like you. So who the fuck cares? And she's like, I need to go do things on my own. Um, and then the book ends with her and Coram riding off towards the southern desert. Yeah. So yeah. And faithful. And faithful. And faithful. That is true. Okay. So. Um, that took forever. I apologize. Um, <laughs> well, again, we interrupted it a lot. We did, we did talk about it. So, the stories and th- the, the themes that we want to talk about? Well, I do want to state that in reading this, like you said, it is very episodic. But I, yeah. it, it, it doesn't have any, like, real over arc. Like, basically, it's, it's Alana living her life until she gets to be a knight. <laughs> and, yeah. and so there's not, there's no, like huge events like there are events that happen but they're all still very episodic and so it's just it's really just a slice of life story uh, <laughs> it really kind of is in a fantasy world and i feel like we need more of those and it really yeah. is it's just so much like you know and then you know she learned to how to use the bellows one arm like and how you know? how to do it with one arm and <laughs> how to uh you know it's just it's just a little like like if you were reading a fucking webcomic and you saw just like a, a little uh w- one page that's just the the character doing things and it's like oh and we see that they're healing or whatever and it's like yeah that's all it is and it's like okay cool good to see her growing yeah. So, like, the entire thing is supposed to be that she overcomes these fears, right? That's mm-hmm. that's what we're set up in the, in the beginning to yeah. be like, she's going to overcome her fear of love, of the ordeal, of Roger. And we do, technically, yeah. the two of them. Two of the three. I don't think having sex with people counts as learning to love. No. But uh. <laughs> she does have a moment where, like, um, she is realizing the love she has for her friends. I don't remember where. It's towards the end of the book. Yeah. And and yeah. she's like, oh, shit, maybe I did learn to love. Yeah. Oh, but shit, it, guys. I learned to that, love. That's definitely not really, like, though. It's, <laughs> it's, I don't know. I have a lot of feelings about, <laughs> about that. Yeah. I, I feel, yeah, okay, now let's talk about what we did like. I do, okay, I read the... The ordeal, like, mm-hmm. in such a different way this time around than I did, um, like, the first time. Um, because I, I realize, and I don't know if it's actually what's happening or whatever, but it's every time that Alana sees what she's... Because I don't, I don't remember Kel's ordeal. I, like, I remember vague bits about it, but I don't I remember, remember the specifics. It, but I won't try to... <laughs> I won't try to remind um, you. But, like... Every time it, it, it's accepting, okay, this is something that I can't control. So yeah. I have to let it go. And so every time she lets go of something, that's when a new uh, thing pops up. And so it, it's very, it's it's really nice. Like What I really like about the ordeal is that the chamber is literally telling Alana yeah. on Roger. Yeah. Like everything that she faces has something to do with something Roger has done to her. Mm-hmm. Um, 
It's like, bitch, so, other your, than the first, spider, your first thing to do, go fuck yeah. that fucker up. <laughs> Pretty, like, yeah. And that's the thing that we know later in the series, that the chamber is sentient. Mm-hmm. Um, and sapient, I think, is the best. Like, mm-hmm. the chamber is a is an entity who has thoughts and feelings and knows what, like, everything that's ever going to happen. Yeah. Um, but doesn't It's a sentient pocket time. dimension. Yes. Um, so I think it's very interesting that it's like, hey, okay, little steps. You remember when you almost drowned? Okay, you remember one of the times where, where you got attacked in the cold? We're gonna, we get this? <laughs> it's just leading her on the path to freeing herself from the gauze. And I really, really yeah. like that once she does do that and she rips it open, she is like, holy shit, this is why I didn't know. This is why every time Thom or George was like, um, this is an issue. Mm-hmm. She just would be like, no, it's okay. And I like that that is, you can literally see that throughout the entire book where she's like, wow, he tried to murder me. And then she just stops thinking about it. She magicked her wax doll's way out of the gauze bag. <laughs> yeah. Like, that's impressive. <laughs> it is. But, like, definitely the chamber was helping her along there. Right. It was like, this is what you need to do. <laughs> and that's very, it does the same thing to Kel, kind of. So, I yeah. like that that stays the same. Yeah. Um, I love the fact that when Alana gets kidnapped, everyone was like, but his cat. <laughs> they like bring Faithful back to the camp, being like, "We can't wake Faithful. I can't wake him up. What's going on? <laughs> we can't find Alan, and we can't wake up Faithful. What happened?" <laughs> and then John tries to wake him up, and just fucking passes out because <laughs> he tries to use his magic. He's like, "We need this cat awake. We need. <laughs> we need the cat will help us in order to find a lot." <laughs> Faithful, where's Alan? <laughs> and I just really, really love that bit where, um, where Jonathan's like, "I, we need to go rescue Alan," um, and Miles is like, "You, you can't. If I <laughs> hear about that, I'll have to stop you." But um, and then Jonathan's like, "But they can't find out that Alan." And Miles is like, "Stop, <laughs> stop right now." You don't, you need to not tell me why it's important that Alan, of all people, not be caught. I would like to hear it from Alan. (laughs) So good. Yeah. Because Miles was in the room when Alana tried to heal. uh, Did When Alana (laughs) did heal. Bring, bring Jonathan literally back from death. Yeah. Um, because she invoked the power of the goddess and um, the goddess spoke through her, and uh, Mithra spoke through John. So, like, and the goddess sometimes will choose <laughs> men, but very rarely. Yeah. So, it's like... <sighs> yeah. Um, oh, also, I, I, I suddenly realized I, this wasn't... We didn't mention it anywhere. So, um, their father's dead. At the beginning of this book. And it's like, oh, right. (laughs) Yeah, she has a father. (laughs) It's just like, she doesn't even like grieve him really. She's like, yeah, he died. It's crazy. (laughs) And everyone else is like, thank fuck. Because everyone hated him. (laughs) They're like, goddamn deadbeat dad. (laughs) Alan deserves better. (laughs) You hating on our boy. Fuck you. (laughs) Literally ever. Like, that's my favorite yeah. One of my favorite things about the first book is that, like, Duke Gareth mm-hmm. and Sir Miles are both like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to talk bad about your dad. And she's like, you did? <laughs> I, I thought we were just stating truths here. What? What are we talking about? <laughs> so. But yeah. Fucking love that. And then, honestly, just just faithful existing is, is one yeah. of my favorite parts, so. Yeah. yeah. I do. I mean, we love a black cat. We do love a black cat. As you might have seen by the fact that my my, my cat is black. <laughs> Every cat that has ever been mine has been, <laughs> in my life, has been black. <laughs> However, things we didn't like about this book. Consent. 
and how it was nowhere to be seen. Oh my god, it was so bad. It is so uncomfortable, because first, just looking at this, right, being that Alana is at least three years younger than Jonathan, she might be four. I think she's only three years younger than she's he is. three, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just that he's made a knight early-ish. Yeah. Compa- he's only a squire for three years instead of four, mm-hmm. like the others. But, um, and then... Like what, did he test George, out of one year? <laughs> George is six years older than she is. Uh-huh. So when she's 15 and he's being like, you know, we marry as young as 15 in the city, he's 21 doing this. <laughs> To a 15-year-old? No. No, 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 no. 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 <laughs> Do not like. So uncomfortable. And the fact that with Jonathan, right, mm-hmm. there is no way she can consent to anything. No. Because, one, he, like, the Nightmaster Squire situation, there's so much of a power imbalance there mm-hmm. that there's no way she, like, that is actual consent. And then on top of that, there's the age difference. And then on top of that is the, he's the fucking prince. Yeah. Well, and then on top of that, even if she, you know, didn't care about those things, he is also, he has one thing up on her in that he is one of the only people who knows she is a girl. And he can, if she like denies him, he can use any of these powers he has over her. Yeah. And that's And she can do nothing. And then the, just that one scene with, like, he's like, you know, we belong together. Yeah. Oh. We belong to one another. Can't fight it. And it's like, I hate this Ugh. so much. Every, like, as a child, I remember being like, oh my gosh, this is so romantic. <laughs> no. no. No, this is fucking hell it's to witness. incredibly fucked up. Um, and, like, I feel like this... No, 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 no. The next book is even worse. Yeah. I I will admit, the next book is worse with consent. Um, the next book, honestly, is the worst book in the series, in my opinion. So that's fun. Let's, uh, I bet everyone's very excited to, uh, to read that with us. <laughs> it's okay. I'll at least tell you what happens. Anything else you want to, like, really touch on with the book? Um... I feel like there's just not as much yeah, to this book. There really isn't. And to I was, really discuss. I was noticing that as I was reading it because I kept kind of getting distracted. And that's just, it's just because it was just a lot of, and then this happened, and then this happened, and then this happened. Yeah. Which I I get it. It's a, it's a fast tracking because she had to edit things down. Um, yeah. Like we know that for certain. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so... I understand why it had to happen, but dang, it's like it's sort of like I would have liked to have seen these things. The whole yeah, the old instead of, show yeah. don't tell. Instead of being like, and then she would just go into the city with Mistress Cooper. Like we don't actually go into the city. We with them. never like see any experience she has in the city. Uh, no, dressed as a woman. It's like, and she did the thing, and, and it she was good. Did the thing, <laughs> yeah. Which I get it. Yeah. Um, also, side note. When I reread this last year, mm-hmm. um, I remember thinking, wait, I thought her secret lasted longer than two books. I did too. So it's like the entire conceit is kind of like, it was not supposed to be a quartet at first, I don't think. Mm-mm. Because this very much feels like we've defeated Roger, so like, what next? <laughs> There's like, at the end of the first book, we're like, wow. Roger's a fucking threat. We need to be reading the next book. But then at the end of this book, we're like... Let's go on an adventure, man. Yeah, it's just a very open-ended... We're going on an adventure! Honestly, it's like, and okay, <laughs> the first two books are the Circle of Magic books, and then the, the second two books are the Circle Opens books. <laughs> and the Kelly I mean, books are the Circle Reforms. <laughs> <laughs> Reforged, yeah. Reforged, I, yeah, damn it. yeah. Which, by the way, I stopped rereading Battle Magic so that when we get to it, I don't, I can just be like, this is the second time I've read it and we can talk about it there. Um, But yeah, 
This book really just wasn't very... You'd think that it wasn't enough to have five pages of recap, but everything that happened just felt like I had to talk about it because otherwise... I would have just skipped the entire thing. Yeah, because it's kind of like, <laughs> it is very much, because that's that's what I mean, right? It's sort of a slice of life. It's just sort of like, okay, and your point is, it's like yeah. when our grandma tells stories about things that happened, and we're like, what was the point of that story? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> was she just telling us that she got popcorn stuck in her teeth? Is that it? <laughs> yeah, but I have to Why say that I need to know what the movie in- was. It's still an enjoyable, yes. like, experience reading this book, other than the consent issues. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Not great. Yeah. Yeah. It's, oof. That was, that yeah. was, yeah. That, honestly, I was just taken aback by those, those moments, because I was like, ooh. Why did yeah. it feel like she had more, um, um, um agency, agency before? <laughs> Because we were children. She is literally just a little girl being just kissed back and forth. And it's just like, um. Yeah. The 80s were a time. Yeah. Yeah. Woof. Glad I wasn't there. Right. (laughs) So, uh, yeah. Now my, the best part of any of our episodes, which is, what's your favorite headcanon about this book, Ariana? Um, my formed headcanon as I was reading it, um, because it got to the part where she's describing seeing Thom standing there at, at her, you know, knighting ceremony. Um, <laughs> and she's like, oh, I guess this red haired, red bearded man. And I was like, bitch, he didn't have a beard last time we saw him. He magnified himself a beard just for the occasion so he could be like, oh, yes, yes. I am a wise master of the mystic arts. <laughs> Yes, I'm a sorcerer. Yes. <laughs> you can tell by my beard. Look, um, I'm not putting on a has, voice. What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, the the funniest thing is that, like, literally most people don't get their mastery until they're, like, 30, and he does it at 18, <laughs> and it's like, bitch, like, it's hard. <laughs> um, and now I'm just gonna grow a beard. Boo! <laughs> just show all y'all's up. <laughs> yeah, basically. Um, my favorite headcanon for this book is that Miles was just going under the assumption that Alana was trans, <laughs> and he supported his trans son, um, and when Alana goes, like, I am actually a woman, <laughs> Miles has to, like, switch gears, like, yes, that's what I knew the whole time, <laughs> you were actually a woman. Mm-hmm. Yes. Not that you are a trans man. Mm-hmm. Okay, 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 yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand Let's- now. <laughs> <laughs> he was ready he was ready to accept his trans son no matter what and that's why he was. I, and, I, and that's why it makes sense that they make such so she makes so little uh of a deal about um the father dying because it's just like no she's got a daddy and then she like quorum comes back and at the very end she's like i made my dad proud she's got all these dads man she does she has an overwhelming amount of dads. She just, like, everybody meets her as like, either, like, dad, Duke big brother. Gareth. <laughs> yes. Everybody's just like, like, she's got, for dads, she has Duke Gareth, Miles, and Coram. Mm-hmm. And then for older brothers, she has, like, everyone at the palace. Everyone. <laughs> just fucking everyone. Um, love that. I love that for her. <laughs> and then she doesn't notice yeah. She's like, so oblivious she, to the love in her life. She really is. See, the goddess at the beginning of the book should have been like, not that you're afraid of love, but Man. there's love all around you. You need. I feel like, like the goddess should have been like, okay, I need to spell things out for you. <laughs> These are the things for the next four years. This is what you have to accomplish. Love. <laughs> knighthood. Roger, I am planning your next five years for you. Let's do it. I'm going to helicopter mom this shit. (laughs) Pretty much. So that was that book. That was that book. So next book is... Woman Who Rides Like a Man? Yes, Woman Who Rides Like a Man. Um, I would just really like to give a bit of a warning about this book. That there is some... really crappy, like, 
relationship manipulation mm. um, that goes on in this next one, as well as um, just some, like, mild uh, Islamophobia. Like, mm-hmm. veiled Islamophobia. Islamophobia. <laughs> Islamophobia. I'd want to just put a thought in there for some reason. But that's my that's my warning for you guys. So see you guys next month. Yeah. Uh, when we discuss the woman who rides like a man. I wonder who that could be. I wonder who that <laughs> is. So yeah. As a reminder, I'm Risa. And I'm Ariana. And uh what do we say at the end of these episodes? Keep on reading. Oh shit, we also have a bunch of things you can Yeah, read, yeah, no, read, no, we're done. Find we're us done. on. We're over it. <laughs> Keep on reading. <laughs>